Okay, so welcome to this tutorial uh, involving the use of the ice table and more specifically the use of the approximation method. Now, if we take a look at this particular sample problem that we have here, you will see that, of course, it is at equilibrium as denoted by the bidirectional arrow, and we have a really low Kc value. And that really low Kc value is important for us because if we recognize that it's a really low Kc value, then what that tells us is this reaction lies to the left. And since it is so low, it's very strongly reactant favored. And what that in fact is going to tell us is that when this reaction uh, under these conditions comes to equilibrium, that effectively the concentrations of the reactants aren't really going to change all that much. And there's not really going to be all that much product. As a result, we can use something called the approximation method, uh, which is going to make our calculations a little bit easier. For you, what that means is, even though it might look like we have to use the quadratic formula to solve this, that's not going to be the case. So you can see here that I've written down what our starting amounts are. They are in moles per liter, so we don't have to worry too much about converting them into concentrations because they're already there. You'll notice that the product concentration is zero because initially we only have the reactants. Now, as we move through this reaction, we're going to see that we have to put in what changes we are going to have to this particular system. Now, notice for our product here, it is going to go up. And the only way it can go is up because it initially starts at zero. Because the coefficient there is 2, it's going to go up by 2x, or whatever factor it is that it's going to increase by, it's going to increase by a factor of 2x. And if we take a look over at our reactant side, we can see that these two, the only place they can go is down by that same factor x. Now again, we just have to pause for a second here and think about what those x's mean. Remember, the x that we're looking at is whatever factor the nitrogen and oxygen are going to go down by. And these are going to be the same factor, the same value, because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Keep in mind, this is an equilibrium system. It is closed, so there's nothing coming in and nothing going out. So the only way that the nitrogen monoxide can be formed is if nitrogen and oxygen react. And since it's a one-to-one -one ratio, whatever nitrogen goes down by, oxygen has to go down by that same amount. On the other side, if we take a look at nitrogen monoxide, we have to remember that for every mole of nitrogen gas, every mole of oxygen gas, it is going to go up by a factor of 2 because of the coefficient 2. So whatever nitrogen and oxygen go down by, nitrogen monoxide is going to go up by that factor times 2. Now, just because the in this scenario our x's on the reactant side equal our x on the product side, that doesn't always have to be the case. It really just has to do with the coefficients. So just because it works out that our negative x's and our positive x's, so to speak, uh, equal or cancel each other out, or at least it looks that way, it does not mean it's going to happen all the time. It's strictly based on the coefficients that we have. So now given that information, we're going to take a look at the E. Remember, E are the equilibrium concentrations. They can be determined by taking the sum of the I and the C. So what we get there is 0 0.085 minus X, 0 0.038 minus X, and we get 2x for our product side. So now that we have our equilibrium concentrations, we can take a look at what our equilibrium expression is going to be for this particular reaction. Notice that again, it's products over reactants raised to the coefficient or having an exponent representing the coefficient from the balanced chemical equation. So we can see here that it's products squared over the concentration of each of the reactants to the exponent one, which of course we don't have to write. So now that we have our equilibrium expression, before we go through and plug these things in, remember this is a really low Kc value. We can see here that it's 4.2 times 10 to the negative 8. What that will allow us to do is undergo or perform a test. Now this test is going to tell us whether or not we can use the approximation method. And so if we take a look, the way that we do the test and you may recall this from the video that we did originally on the ice tables, is that we take the initial concentration, the smallest initial concentration, and we divide it by the K. In this case, it is Kc, but we could be using any other equilibrium constant uh, for any other type of equilibrium problem.
So once we perform this calculation, we can see that in fact, our value is pretty large. So the benchmark for our test is 500. Now, that is kind of an approximate value because sometimes if it's in between 200 and 500, it's okay to use. But for the most part, if it's at or around or certainly greater than 500, we can assume that we can use the approximation method. Now, what that means for us is that x is going to be so low once we calculate it that it's not going to appreciably change the equilibrium concentrations of the nitrogen and oxygen, meaning that it's so low that it's not really going to differ that much from their initial concentrations once we take precision into account. So what that's going to do is make our calculations a lot easier. So now if we're going to look at our Kc expression and we can exclude the x, that's going to make our calculations a lot easier. So now we're going to put in the values for our Kc. That is 4.2 times 10 to the negative 8. I'm going to put in the values from the E part of the ice table, and I'm going to uh, exclude the x because of the approximation method due to the validity of the test that we performed. So now I have all of this information into my equilibrium expression. So at this point, I can just start to expand and simplify and solve for x. So right now I'm going to take these two product values, I'm going to multiply it by my Kc, and what that's going to give me is a value. It's going to be a relatively small value, and I'm going to then expand the brackets here. Remember we have to multiply everything in the brackets, so it's going to be 4x squared. At this point, I'm going to take the 4, I'm going to divide the 1.36 times 10 to the negative 10 by 4 in order to solve for x squared. So now in order to solve for x, because x was squared initially, I'm going to have to take the square root of both sides. That's going to leave me with x being equal to the value that we obtain when we get 1.36 times 10 to the negative 10 divided by 4, which is 3.39 times 10 to the negative 11. And then, then taking the square root of that value, I'm going to get a value for x of 5.82 times 10 to the negative 6. Now, I'm not done here because ultimately what we're trying to find is not X, but what the concentration of the product, that is the nitrogen monoxide, is at equilibrium. So in order to do that, in order to find the concentration of our nitrogen monoxide, we're going to have to recall that at equilibrium it is equal to 2X. Now since we have solved for X, I can now take my value for X, I can sub it in or multiply it by 2, so it's going to be 2 times 5.82 times 10 to the negative 6. And once I perform that calculation, we are going to obtain a final value for our nitrogen monoxide concentration of 1.2 times 10 to the negative 5. Now, keep in mind it is a concentration, so we do have to include our units at this point. Now, in terms of significant figures here, take a look at this. Notice that my k value was two significant figures, that uh, my initial concentrations were both of two significant figures, and that I wasn't really performing any addition or subtraction here. It was primarily just multiplication and division. So as a result, I can just take a look at the two significant figures and represent my final answer in two significant figures. Now, if we take a look initially at why we could subtract x, notice how much smaller our x value is than our initial concentrations. We're talking about initial concentrations that are times 10 to the negative 2, whereas if we take a look at our x value, it's times 10 to the negative 6. So even if we were to take our x value and subtract it from our initial concentrations, due to precision rules, our initial concentrations would effectively remain as they are at equilibrium. So in this case, it's fair to say that our test was valid. Hopefully this video gave you a better sense of how to generally use ice tables and how to ultimately use the approximation method to negate any changes in x. Thanks for watching.